The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning. Welcome to the the May 22nd, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, you can always send me an email. Send that one off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tigers, then, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. The Dow and the Trannies are both to the downside. 60 points and 40 points. That's about two-tenths and three-tenths for percent. Otherwise, the other U.S. industries is training to the upside. s and is up about seven, two-tenths for percent, four-tenths for the NASDAQ 100, 52 points, seven-tenths for the Russell, 13 points. The semis um, are basically flat out there. You've got gold up six bucks, silver down 24 cents, lights we crude up nine pennies, natural gas up 18 cents, 30 treasury printed out at 126.25. That is off 12 ticks. Let's uh, begin by taking a look at where are we at on a market breath. So let's take a look at the daily, the weekly, the 240, and the 60-minute time frames. And here is for the S&P 500. Bullish, 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 bearish. So it's the weekly time frame. That's the thorn in the side. There's 108 instruments above profile, 164 below. That says choppy market continues. If we take a look at the NASDAQ 100, bullish, 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 bullish. So it's the NASDAQ that really is the one that is controlling the marketplace out here. So you're bullish across all four of those time frames. We have one other time frame that you and I can look at, and that's the 30-minute. So let's pull that over here and see what we're at on the intraday 30-minute chart here. We're at a kissing cousins. This is the S&P. You've got 257 above. It says 58 below, but it's gaining. I can see that. Let's take a look at the uh, NASDAQ one here, the NQ. The NQ has... 41 above, 23 below. So the NQ is bullish for all five of the time frames. Let me update the S&P here. We might get the bullish crossover now as uh, as it was really trying to calculate. Yeah, we don't have it here. We don't have it on the S&P. Again, choppy market, but the NQ being the one that is the dominant um area for us to uh, take a look at. So with that being the case, let's go ahead and let's move over and take a look at what the NQ is doing. Let's look at its charts. Let's look at the intraday. If you give me a moment here, we'll get over to that screen. Uh, day trading. There we go. Give me a moment to do this. Hopefully we can do this in a nice, smooth way today. So here we've got the charts for eight different charts for the NQ. So the daily time frame shows the TD9 count top. So let's take a look at it. You've also got wave number seven that is in place right now, unless we get a higher high today. But if you do close above the TD9 count top, and that level would be at uh, 13,913. We're at 13,913 right here, right now. If price closes above that, it negates that uh, pattern. There's still a road momentum indicator signal that's present, but that needs a bullish reversal candle. Price above profiles, price is above the top of its green oscillator and change line. And I did mention there is a new profile that is attempting to form that is below price, and that is a bullish message. So watch that 13, 913 level. If we take a look at the uh, five-hour time frame chart, it has a wave number seven top as well. 
Uh, that uh, high out there is at uh, 1396025. You spike above that, that pattern gets negated. The four hour time frame chart don't have any kind of a topping signal. The, the two hour time frame chart does have a TD9 count top. And that would give us that same level, that same level being the 13,960.25. So if price were to close above that, most certainly on a two-hour bar, the next two-hour bar is at noon after that, two and then four, um, then you would have a uh, strong momentum move to the upside inside that two-hour time frame chart. Now, right now, the two-hour time frame chart is probably the one that's the best to watch out here. And the reason is because you can see this formed a TD9 count top. And it formed a TD9 count bottom. And now price has made its way up to its TD9 count breakdown resistance level, 13,931.75. So even though it's not showing us the minute by minute, what we are seeing here is this is the chart pattern for the uh, two hour time frame that's giving us the best signals. And that's coming from inside the NQ. Do we see anything else out here? Like I see a 60 minute TD9 count bottom, price finding resistance at that 13,929 level. That's its TD9 count breakdown area. So it's at 60 and the 120 that are the best charts here to be paying attention to. What else do we need to take a look at out here? Let's look at the other 60 and 120 minute charts. So this, these will take just a moment here to populate. Let me get to those areas. Let's first throw up the 120 minute equity future charts. We'll just look and see if there's any kind of synergy out here between time frames. Dow equity future, which had a, a two, I had a, a TD9 count top. Price came all the way back to its breakout level of support of 33,299 and held and now price found resistance at resistance the top of that profile at 33588 you got to love how these numbers these tools they come together they help to narrate the story they help to identify where price is likely headed to if we take a look at the two hour es mini it has a wave number seven it has a sell the d point top so if price can close above its high its high being 42 27.25. The NQ, we've already taken a look at the NQ. The Dow, we've just done that. Inside the Russell 2000, not much here to assist us with. So at this stage, you've got the Dow Equity Future TD9 count that's working. The ES Mini sell the D point and the TD9 count on the NQ. So watch those highs out there. Of course, we'll watch the lows for some kind of change in trend. That was the 120 minute chart. The 60 minute also had some kind of signal. So let's go take a look at those. Those will populate here momentarily as well. I believe was the TD9 count bottom on the NQ. That's going to be in your upper right-hand side and resistance there. Um, so the interesting pattern here is on the Russell 2000, it negated its 60-minute TD9 count top. It's trading a profile, trading above its green oscillator and change line. So its recent high is where this thing is likely headed to. And that's from about 10 in the morning back on May the 19th. And that's a, from the range of uh, 1794.50 up to 1805. 60 out there so that's what's going on we take a look at the general markets if we go quickly here i'll switch back because we're about to go to a break if we take a look at what's going on inside the new york stock exchange it's the it's advanced decline oscillator we'll pull that up here momentarily that's right here that's still well it's back above zero so we've been oscillating back and forth above zero it is still sellers that are remaining in control unless we get two consecutive daily closes above zero inside the new york stock exchange the advanced decline oscillator it is printed above zero right now so it's slightly or it's leaning bullish. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back to this break. We're going to take a look at the XOP for SNP, STLD for Jacob. Coda wants to look at Disney. Dan in the Den, he's got a few that we're going to look at. So uh, thank you, folks, for all the requests. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back up, folks. Let's get to some of the requests out here. The first one coming in from SNP inside the Tiger's Den. We'll look at our white background charts here momentarily. We're going to switch over to those. And we're going to take a look at the XOP. And give me just a moment, get all that set up. So here we take a look at this. What we do know, SNP, about XOP, which is the oil and gas exploration for the um, S&P 500, we know that it's trading right into a resistance zone. The resistance zone was established by its uh, bear structured um, TAS market profile. And so those levels S&P that you're uh, dealing with here, it's a resistance level 124.47 to 125.70. Now, if this can close above 125.70, your next battle will be at 126.27. That would be the weekly oscillator and change line. If price can close above that, the next battle will be about 134.46. That would be the monthly oscillator and change line. To the downside, you close below 117.12, you probably have some problems and 93.95 gets opened up. That's not what you're dealing with right now. You've got decent volume today, 1.7 million shares. The swing point, which is right back here on April 28, did volume of 6 million shares. So it's still kind of light there, but it's not too bad. It's, it's similar type of volume, but you're just inside that uh, sell zone area. So uh, best of luck to you if you're long. Hopefully you can get through there. The next request from Jacob inside the Tiger's Den. Jacob wanted to take a look at uh, STLD. So let's get STLD up here. Right now, this is uh, looks like consolidating with inside its daily profile. That is Steel Dynamics. It does have a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern. That pattern was confirmed when it generated that bullish engulfing candle back on May the 18th. So on a daily basis, you've got a bottom signal with price dealing with its uh, profile resistance and support levels. Right now, it's support that you're watching, and that's at the 96.89 area. Your resistance points are going to be 100.87 to the upside and 104.85. Price is also trading below the bottom of its weekly profile now that's a problem because what that says here you're below support and price could be targeting 7577 we would not make that call unless price closed below 9528 then you have to start getting concerned out there because then your support for your roads momentum indicator bottom will have vanished and inside the monthly chart you're below the center of its profile that says 7585 could be the target line. So when we take a look at STLD, it's the bottom 
uh, that uh, on the daily time frame that could have you but uh, enter into a long position here. But you've got to be real careful based upon this longer term weekly and monthly set of charts out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to STLD. Let's get to our next request coming in from Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And Dan wants to take a look at M M C R B M C R B trading at about 503 i just want to make sure that is series therapeutics it is trading at 503 now dan there's a new profile that is attempting to form it is not on my white background charts but it is on the black ones and the profile here the bottom is at 474 so very close to the prior profile 473 the top is at 517 and the center is at 491 you're above the center so odds favor this is going to target i would say the oscillator and change line which is at 511 the top of the profile is at 517 so, Dano, that is where MCRB is, looks like it's headed to. You do have profile resistance on the monthly time frame, and that is at the uh, level of 507. So another little battle, but 511, you know, seems like that's where we're headed to. That's really what I see when I take a look at start. You should get a rally that at least lasts today. Maybe it's one more day out here. The reason is if we take a look at consecutive moves to the upside, the same thing seems to stall after bars three or four, you know, out here. Sometimes certainly two. We know about the two two bar reaction out here. So you could get a couple more days rally before you see some kind of a pullback out there. But first, you're going to have to deal with resistance. So that'll probably establish whether you get that pullback or not. 517 is your number out there. So hope that that helps you out. AVRO is the next ticker symbol. And that's for Dan as well. And that is for Avrobi, Avrobio. Yeah, Avrobio. Now, Avrobio, big gap to the upside today with gigantic volume. What did they cure here, Dano? 64 million shares have already traded hands today. Kind of give you a feel for what traded hands just a few days ago, April 25th, 152,000 shares. 64 million. They clearly have solved something out here. So where's this thing headed to? Dan, your next level of resistance out here is at a buck seventy-six, which happens to be the top of that uh, weekly, a uh, monthly profile out there. So it's not out of the woods. The actual high that we've seen today has been what a buck seventy. So one seventy-six is going to be the nut that you need to see this thing crack. Now, if it can do that, then what you're looking at is to move up to a buck ninety-three. And a buck ninety three would be the top of its weekly profile out there. So that's all that I see here. We take a look at ticker symbol A V R O, and uh, best of luck to you there. The next request uh, I B R X. That's also one from Dan. So let me just do that right here. I B R X, and another medical stock. That uh, Dan is the uh, king in this uh, field here. And IBRX is trading at about 290 right now. This is Immunity Bio, and it's trading below the bottom of its daily profile. It has already tested once and rejected the, uh, well, it did, it closed below for one day and then back above. That's the TDI account breakout level that identified the top up there. You can see bar number eight, price pulled all the way back to that uh, to that level. So um, what do we have here, teacher? Below? You're with inside the weekly profile. You're below the monthly profile. So IBRX just doesn't look – it looked great there for a while, right? But it's given back all those gains. One of Basil's Eiffel Tower kind of a deals out here. So I don't have a bottom other than price coming back to that daily area of support, that breakout area. Not much. I don't. I, my my guess at this stage here is price is likely to head back to retest that 248. But I don't have a really clear picture there, uh, Dan, on IBRX. So you probably have a better feel for it than I do. But best of luck to you on each of those. The next request coming in from Dennis. Dennis wants to take a look at Microsoft. MSFT is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's get that up on our screen out here. And thank you all for the uh, request. Uh, it just makes the show go smoother. Uh, makes my job really a lot easier. Now, in the case of Microsoft, uh, there is no top in place here. This thing is off to the races. And when I say off to the races, of course, it depends upon the Friday close. But just to give you a feel how bullish the market is, last week was a weekly TD9 count top. And if price closes this week about 319.04, tells you about a strong momentum move to the upside. If I were to ask you where is price headed to, assuming you could read my charts here, you would say 338, Steve-O. Why would you say that? Because that's a TD9 count breakdown level out here. Now, there is an A to B equals CD, and that 1 to 1 gets us out, or the 1 to 1.272 gets us up to 326. So that's another price target here, but I think 333, 338 is its level. Price is trained above its monthly 
TD nine account breakdown level. And that doesn't mean as much on the twenty eighth as it twenty uh, second as it does next week out there. But of course, next week, a week from today, will be Memorial Day. And in Memorial Day, Steepy will be in Cairo, Egypt. I'll be eating dinner a week from today. It's 11, 26, 7 hours. We'll be getting ready for a dinner at one of the top 50 restaurants uh, in the world. And uh, in any event, so with regard to Microsoft out here, Dennis, this thing is bullish no matter how we look at it. And it gets really bullish. We take a look at that uh, month, uh, weekly time frame chart, which is – at this stage here, not even a blip with regard to that TD9 count. Microsoft, I believe, is the number one holding inside of the uh, NDX100. So this thing is on fire. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be right back. Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Not much change in the market. The only change, the trainees went positive. Dow still off by 74. The other indices trading to the upside. We're taking a look at Disney out here. This is for code inside the Tiger's Den. 
So Disney needs a bullish reversal candle to generate a road momentum indicator uh, signal that's just been triggered today out there. So I would pay attention. I would wait for that. I would definitely wait for that because if we take a look at prices below the bottom of its profile daily, below the bottom of the weekly profile, below the bottom of the monthly profile, below red oscillator and change lines, Coda, all of those are very bearish signals out there. Now, if uh, Disney wants to generate a bullish reversal candle, and today could generate a hammer candle, so watch today's close, uh, you could get a, uh, a confirmed buy signal that would just say that price might only get up to its oscillator and change line or top of its profile in the 94 or 9466 area out there. Ideally, maybe the better trade setup is that it continues to pull back. You do get that road momentum indicator signal, but it tests the swing point high out or the swing point low, I should say, from December the 30th, from the end of the year. And that level is 88.24. The volume there is um, about 60 million shares. Now, last week inside of Disney, it did 77 million. So it's kind of pushing towards that swing point with volume, which is a reason to say, hey, just be patient on this. Don't jump into this. But watch for Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom pattern, a bullish reversal candle to confirm that. So I hope that helps you out there, Coda, with regard to uh, Disney. The next request is to take a look at MUB. That is for Jambalaya inside the uh, Tigers. Now, now, this is the, uh, this is the municipal uh, bond ETF out here and uh, he was talking about a double top that's the, I assume he's taking a look at uh, right back here on February 3rd there was a high and then price got back in those high back on April the 14th if we take a look at the daily time frame what we can see here is an A to B equals CD to the downside we'll just simply draw in the A to B level and I'm just simply going to now move this over to the C. Once you get to the B point out here, you just look for the next highest high. Well, that's going to be this one that's labeled B. That's part of the Chapman wave out there. And you can see we're getting very close to the one-to-one -one price projection area. Odds favor, this gets down towards 105.15. Today is bar number seven. You could get a TD nine count bottom pattern that would form between tomorrow and Thursday. So watch for that. Watch for a bullish reversal candy. If you get that, that's going to signal that the uh, ETF, MUB, the mini bond, Bond ETF should go target a oscillator and change line currently 106.51. Price is below the weekly set of profiles, so that's a bearish signal. You do have a nice Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern with price consolidating with inside this monthly profile. That level of support that is very key. It's almost close down to it, which is down at the 105.45 level. So be patient on MUB Jambalaya if you're looking for an entry point. I'll wait for that bullish reversal candle and or a TD nine count pattern to form out there. Mike wants to take a look at the IW. The question was about TD9 counts out here. When I look at the daily time frame here, Mike, on the daily basis, you are trying to form bar number four today. So nothing there to be worried about. Price is above the top of its daily profile, but it's got a good old-fashioned consolidation as well. And the top of that consolidation, I'd set at about 179.78. That may be where this is targeting. On a weekly basis for the IWM, you got resistance at 181.91. And in the monthly time frame, it's up at about 188.52. But let's not stop there for Mike. Let's flip over and real quickly take a look at the uh, equity future charts out here. Just see, and this is of the Russell 2000. Just make sure we get that same kind of signal out here. And in the case of the Russell 2000 for its daily time frame, also forming bar number four today, 1814 is going to be an area of resistance for you to watch. As I look at the other charts out here, it's that 120 minute chart. We looked at that earlier. That has a Rhodes momentum indicator topping signal. You're going to get well, the 30 minute, I should say, is actually the one to be paying attention to. This will generate a TD nine count top as we get to 12 noon or it should. Yeah, it will. Unless, unless it really craters out there. And uh, then that pattern will complete at 1230. So that suggesting you should see the Russell 2000 pull back a bit. Now we're doing the play by play, getting really granular here by diving down into the 30 minute chart. But that's what you should expect between really between now and 1230. We should expect to see the Russell 2000 kind of uh, peter out, so to speak, and then start to pull back towards that oscillator and change line. So, Mike, I hope that helped you out with regard to the IWM. And thanks for taking the time to write in. Alton wants to take a look at um, FXI out here. Now, this is one of the uh, FXI is uh, might be the China 25 or something like that. I forget which China stocks it is. I don't have access to those China stocks. That means trading FXI or even providing you with the best information is 
pretty suspect, quite frankly. But you really need to understand what's inside because you've got all these gaps. These gaps mean absolutely nothing. Why? Some of them could mean something, but most of these gaps mean nothing. They're currency conversion issues out here. But with regard to the technical patterns, a TD9 count top was formed inside of FXI. That was back here on March the 30th. Price pulled back. It actually pulled back below its breakout level. Dan, I'll explain to you the TD9 count breakout level. I say get through some of these. I see that question that you've got for you or breakdown areas out here. So what do we see? I see price below profile, but above its red oscillator and change line. It's really kind of neutral. The same thing with regard to the weekly below profile, above a red oscillator and change line. It's kind of it's not a clear signal to me as to what's going on here. The monthly, somewhat of a consolidation with inside profile levels, although the oscillator and change line is really acting as support at 2779 right now. 2506 is the bottom of the profile. 3343 is the top of the profile. I do not have a good feel for FXI alt, and I wish that I did. Um, I would say find the top 10 instruments, stocks that uh, make that up, get access to that uh, exchange out there, and then go ahead and consider trading those ETFs out there. The next request coming in from uh, S&P inside the Tigers. Then S&P, we're circling back now, and S&P wants to take a good Palantir. PLTR is the uh, ticker symbol out here. So let's see what this is uh, trading at right now. It'll take just a moment here to uh, populate. PLTR. PLTR. So you've got, what are you doing here? What are you doing? You're pulling back. Is there any reason that it's pulling back? Not that I see. Where could this pull back to? So on a pullback out here, and it's really trading at 1186. So I know my system shows 1153. Sorry about that with regard to the delay. It's actually at 1185 out here. Um, there is a large A to B equals CD, but no bearish reversal candle out here. So if this were to pull back, where would it find support? It would be at that 1030 number. 1030 is the top of the uh, current profile, and it happens to be the oscillator and change line. Where is this likely targeted, S&P? I'd have to say 1333 is a more likely target. That is its TD9 count breakdown level. Now, Dano. Dan asked a question. He's trying to wrap his head around a TD9 count breakdown or a TD9 count breakout level. Dan, um, I would say one of our most important roles, one of our most important roles in analyzing a stock chart is first understanding where support and resistance is at. We've got to understand where support and resistance is at. So you, and during this show here, we use these TAS market profiles to provide you and I with a competitive advantage out there. We know where the buyers and sellers are sitting. So that's a beautiful thing. We also have when stocks break out and break down. Now, there's different ways to take a look at that. The TD9 count pattern, my experience over thousands and thousands and thousands of charts, are that they set up the most objective levels of where price broke out from and where price broke down from. And on a pullback, price will try to find support. It could be a profile levels or it could be at its breakout area. That would be the red line. Palantir for its weekly time frame, it broke down at 1333 using the TD9 count system and it works really accurately as you guys have been able to see you guys and gals have been able to see over each show see roads with TFNN we'll be right back we're gonna take a look at BJ AI Tesla you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market you're going to need a crystal ball after all it's impossible to predict the future right like any endeavor in life before you decide it's impossible get some advice from the experts you might find that it's not so impossible after all for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices selective stocks and commodities subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com the opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So it's off to uh, BJ's, uh, the wholesale uh, club uh, company out here. This is going to be for – who did ask for that? Ah, it's um, Rich. Rich says, Steve, I'm considering starting a position in BJ's. Would you recommend this company and at what price longer-term hold? Also, have you, have you done or are you aware of any studies on how to best scale into a position – uh, thanks for sharing. Well, first, uh, I would say with regard to scaling a into a position, when you get a top or a bottom pattern, so I'll just speak about a bottom pattern. When you get a bottom pattern um, that you're looking to trade, your best risk reward is to buy that full position right then and there versus scaling into it. You scale into it, you've spent all this time trying to learn these patterns, go ahead and trade these patterns, and so your best risk reward is at that time of entry you know and you can have a point where you say if it gets below this i'm out even if my stop hasn't been hit out there so that's going to be my recommendation uh to you um and once you're entering a position with regard to getting into bj's a good company or not I, all i can do is give you the stock patterns out here that we're taking a look at so it's an a to b equal cd to the downside that has completed so let's take a look at this here the i want to draw in the a to b point and then from here we're just simply going to uh, go ahead and I'm going to move the A to B over to the C point so we can see the A to B equals CD. So this has made the one to one, made more than the one to one. And it was confirmed here on this day, this day being May 15th. The reason is because that is a bullish hammer candle. So price right now is testing that bullish hammer candle. It has tested it so far this morning. That low was 69.37. The price closes above 69.37 and can do with less than 2.7 million shares. And you'd have a test and rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. That would be one buy signal. And you'd still have that daily buy the D point pattern out there. Price right now, though, is actually trading at 69.14. So my system here is, is not fully updated. And that is below that uh, swing point low. If that's the case out there and you do get a close below that hammer low, 69.37, then you'd have to wait for the next bullish reversal candle to confirm the next buy the D point pattern. Your price target would most likely be right around the 67.52 level. That's if this current pattern here fails. On a weekly time frame, what you don't have is a real good signal to enter into a long position.
position. You haven't tested a swing point. You don't. You are below profile out here. This is suggesting lower price. And on a monthly basis, BJ's, which has been consolidating with inside its monthly profile, is below the center of the profile. It's below its oscillator and change line. No reason that it too can't head. Uh, it can't get shorter out there. Can't can't get shorter. Can't move lower out here. So you ask the question: Is this a good? You're looking for a bottom. Is this a good company? I would say, from a technical standpoint, you don't have what you'd like to see on the weekly and the daily to get you into a position here, and suggesting that we might actually have some lower price ahead. So I hope that that helps with regard to uh, BJ's out there. And uh, Rich, have a uh, wonderful day. Let's go to our first caller here. It is Mike in Ormond Beach. Mike, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing pretty good. I'm looking at AT&T. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking that it's going to get down to the 1446 area. And I was wondering if you agree with that. 1446. So... Um, right now, what I can share with you is prices below daily, weekly, and monthly profile. There's no, well, and it's trading into a swing point on a monthly that formed a Rogementum indicator pattern. And so right now, you've done monthly volume of 496 million, and it's going against a uh, swing point that is 1.1 million. So it is at least pulling back into that swing area, Mike, with lighter volume on the monthly basis. The actual swing low from a weekly standpoint, unfortunately, it's all the way back at the week of October 14th. And uh, that high is up at the uh, 1527 level. You 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 gave a figure of what 14? I didn't, I didn't write it down. I apologize. Uh, on, a, on a weekly chart, if you look, it's sticking out like a sore thumb. It's uh, 1446. 1446. Lower swing point. Yeah. Got. It. Okay. Okay. So you are gunning for that lower swing point. Okay. Perfect. So you know, with that being said, you you've got a ways to wait. Um, it looks like on the weekly time frame out there, and you'll just do a benchmark of 247 million. Now, the daily time frame tells us that this is getting ready to attempt to form a bottom between today and Wednesday, and that should at least okay. lead to some kind of counter trend move. Now, the reason I say that, Mike, is today looks like it will complete bar number eight of a TD9 count, and that means that tomorrow, as long as price closes below 1666, you would get that TD9 count bottom. Now. What price has been struggling to do here, if you're watching this on Tiger TV, it has been unable to close above that red oscillator and change line. So I would think you would really need to see a close above that to at least suggest a counter trend move up to 1694 or higher. 1712 would be the next number up there. Um, it could just be, you know, because of the weakness that we're seeing on the weekly chart, Mike, and really on mm -hmm. the monthly chart, at least being below support that it might be worthwhile even if you get that bottom and still be patient out there. Um, but you do have the potential for a bottom. Now, if you get a bullish reversal candle, you could also form a Rosemontum indicator bottom. It doesn't matter whether it's one bottom pattern or two bottom patterns. One is, one is sufficient out there. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that kind of was the next question. If there you saw any support in between where we were Today, with today's low and the 1446, uh, and you pretty much answered that. You see a little support around 16. Um, well, I use that as the top of that swing point, you know, because you okay. never know if it's going to get all the way to. So the reason that I use the top, Mike, is a great question, at least for me to, uh, you know, further, further explain my thought that I did in my mind, so I understood it, but nobody else did. Um, you're pulling back into this monthly swing point with lighter volume. So that's a positive. Right. So maybe it's only going to get back and touch the top of that weekly swing point. That's really what I was trying to communicate. I have no idea whether okay. it's going to do that or not. But that's what I would be looking for, knowing that we're coming in light on the monthly time frame at this point in time. You want to right. take a look at these? Well, want to look at the seasonal chart? Should we do that? I'm, I'm sorry. Say, say that again. Should we look at the seasonal chart patterns for AT&T? Sure, that'd be great. I know it would be great, and I just punched up the uh, the, the data, and it's not coming up. I uh, you gotta be careful when when you ask a question, right? You should always know the answer. Now I assume that this would pull up here, Mike. It's not pulling up for me, but uh, when I do get it, I will. You know, I'll post it on the. I, I don't know what what's happened, what what problem I'm having with my seasonal charts right now, but it should be able to pull up ATT. So sorry about asking you a question that I can't deliver on. But uh, it's Stevie right. Perse Stevie Perseverance Road, so I'm gonna find a way. All right. 
All right. Well, thanks, Steve. It's great information as always from you. Thanks again for everything you do for us. Have a great you day. You bet. You bet. That was Mike in Ormond Beach. Greg wanted to take a look at AI out here. So AI is going to negate or appears it will negate its TD9 count top today. That TD9 count top formed on the trading day of May 17th. And if the price closes the, today above 27.13, that pattern gets negated. You have a new profile that formed last Friday. 27.24 is the top of that. You close above that today. That says you move higher. Where is it gunning for? Well, it still needs to clear the weekly top of its profile. And so that number is 28.84. It's been able to clear it before, but that's your next battle. Is that 2884, and that is for ticker symbol AI. And that was for Greg. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. Hey, Greg was looking at AI. He was looking to add to his position. Greg, best thing I could tell you to do is get to a 30-minute time frame chart. These are providing great signals, both the tops and bottoms out here. Uh, it was a, a Friday at 2.30 that gave you a nice TD9 count bottom out there. 
and um, you know it took off to the races this morning out there. So watch for some type of intraday pattern if you're trying to add to AI out there. Next request uh, coming in from the Tiger's Den was to take a look at Tesla. I didn't mark anything down here. Tesla right now is dealing with where this would, so it formed a nice buy the D point, Gartley buy pattern. Did it on a weekly basis when it formed that hammer candle back on April 28th. It's gonna deal with where a counter trend rally would end. So the key level to be watching for Tesla is gonna be 186.83. If price can close by 186.83, this is not a counter trend move. And this tells us that price wants to get up to 217.65. That's the top of the weekly profile out there. Next request was to take a look at CBX. This is for Hector. Hector, with regard to CBX out here, what do we have? You could get a buy the D point pattern today if you get a bullish reversal candle. Right now it's flaking back and forth between a potential hammer or not. You've got a new profile with support at 153.31. Resistance between 155.99 and 156.88 out there. That is its bearish structured daily profile. You have a weekly TD9 count bottom pattern. The swing point, which price is trading into, had 80 million shares. Last week, it traded into that swing point with 33 million shares. So you're backing down with light volume. That's a beautiful thing. Support on the monthly time frame is 143.97. So until we get that bullish reversal candle, and until price gets back above the top of the weekly, uh, bottom of the weekly profile, 154.81, 143.97 will be the number to be watching. I'm not saying price will get down there. It is the only other level of support when I take a look at CVX. And then lastly, I uh, just have just a moment to try to get to this. This is BX. This would be for Nicholas. And Nicholas says, uh, would you please go over BX? Um, BX right now is uh, trading above its daily oscillator and change line, above the weekly, below the monthly profile level here. Let's say BX for tomorrow, Nicholas, and I'll make sure that we get to it. Folks, have a magnificent Monday. I'll see you on Terrific Tuesday. Thanks so much for joining us. Take care and be safe out there.